but hi, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm Aaron Wright uh, from Fierce Festival in uh, Birmingham, um, where I took over as artistic director uh, last spring, a whole year ago. Um, shit. Um, and I grew up uh, down the road in uh, Kidderminster. I've also worn a cap because I need a haircut. Um, but Fierce is an international festival of live art and performance uh, that presents work across the city in a range of locations from arts venues and institutions uh, to car parks, strip clubs and swimming pools. Being a festival of performance, we're very concerned with bodies. Bodies on stages, bodies in a room, bodies on the street, bodies congregating to experience something together. With all these bodies, it's impossible for us to not be, in, to not be invested in matters of body politics. And all those artists that we work with who have no choice but to embody their politics on a daily basis. Fierce was founded in uh, 1997, 20 years ago and has been an RFO and an MPO since the early noughties, when I was still at school. Um, so we're actually older uh, than many venues, but somehow it seems that we still manage to dance around the institutions uh, rather than join them. Perhaps it's to do with a particularly immature succession of artistic directors. Um, but originally it was called Queerfest. So why the change from Queerfest to Fierce? Um, I don't actually know the full answer, um, but I've guessed. Was it that we realised actually that we're an art-led festival, not an issue-led festival? Was it that we didn't actually think it accurately reflected our intersectional politics? Or was it just a crap name? And now, whilst we don't define as a feminist, as a black, as a queer, as a disability-led organisation, we do think if you're not putting disabled, black, queer, women, trans artists at the forefront of your programme, then something's gone very wrong. Ultimately, we put good art first. And over the years, we found that good art goes hand in hand with good politics. So, of course, our program foregrounds the work of marginalised artists. But it feels more of a statement to not shout about it, to just let it be. But then, will we be penalised if we don't tick all the protected characteristics boxes on our MPO application? So I just ticked them all. <laughs> Locally, I think we're seen as a bit of an awkward bastard. Or if not that, then an agitator, a provocateur, uh, an enfant terrible, raising a challenge to dominant hierarchies of the art world, questioning what makes good art, where it can be presented, and who it can be for. In particular, we're known for asking some very awkward questions. Can we vomit on your stage, Debbie? <laughs> can we stick a giant bird's nest on the side of your big tall building and put a funny Belgian in it for a week? How fresh is this fish because it's going to be torn to pieces in the mouth of a pregnant artist, which could be very dangerous if it's not caught today? Would you mind if we put some free-roaming pythons in your market hall? We're not very good at taking no for an answer either, which can be awkward further. And so yes, we may have a reputation for late night performance art parties in strip clubs, pissing, vomiting and bleeding our way around all the stages of the city and generally being a bit cheeky. But in the region, I think we play a vital role, letting institutions take bigger risks, pushing buildings to their limit, imagining new possibilities, doing things that only we could get away with or find an audience for taking the blame. Or perhaps we're just supplementing other people's programs after another round of cuts. Though at heart, fierce, we're actually uh, very accommodating bastards. No ass too big, no gesture too small. Be it finding an artist 62 dashing dogs, or uh, going on foot to meet an artist at Birmingham Airport. Uh, and I think of the Latin for curator, which means to take care. When working with artists for who simply standing on a stage is a political gesture, we need to make sure we're taking proper care of them. Have they got the right conditions to create their best work, the time they need, the emotional support they need? And I think this is something small organisations can do really well. No one size fits all, but bespoke care for the needs of each individual artist. But right now, more than anything, I want to be having some awkward conversations. We need to have awkward conversations, uncomfortable conversations. We all need to feel a little uncomfortable. And from there, we can make progress. So um, to finish, here are some conversations that I'd like to have. I think they could be very uncomfortable, um, but do let me know if you'd like to have any of these conversations with me. I won't uh, emotionally exhaust you by pinning you into a corner, but I can be reached at aaron at wearefierce.org. So what does it mean for someone, uh, you know, 20 something from Kidderminster who's never traveled further than Budapest to be curating an international festival? It's completely stupid. Is it okay that as a white male I'm programming a lot of work by women, black, disabled artists where they might take their clothes off, make a spectacle of themselves, cause emotional or physical pain to themselves? 
Should I get my arsehole out as a gesture of solidarity to even things out? Or perhaps that would make things worse? If a festival is successful, then surely it should cease to exist. If one of Fierce's core aims is to see more experimental international work programmed in the UK, have we simply been failing for 20 years? Is tokenism ever acceptable? When? How can I ever hope to curate beyond my own personal tastes when they're so fundamentally entwined with my own lived experience? If a work doesn't reflect my own experience, will I ever be able to fully appreciate it? How do I identify good work that speaks to the experience of others without sharing that experience? Am I selecting work that appeals to my white male viewpoint? Can I really offer the appropriate level of care to marginalized artists if I don't share their experience? How do I work around this? Are we all thinking about these things regularly enough? What are we doing about them? Anyway, to see if I actually come up with any answers, um, Fierce Festival runs 16th to 22nd of October, hopefully uh, in venues around Birmingham. Thank you.